Hi, I'm Michelle LeBan, and I'm down at Yale Darb Gallery once again on a Saturday morning. And I'm doing my encounter to all the prima, and I'm with William Drake today, and he's going to tell me his story while I paint his portrait. Well, I don't really know where to begin with my story, besides I wound up in Topeka because when I was attending UT, um, my father's suicide that happened when I was uh, eight years old, a really overly defining moment in my life, uh, just uh, really uh, hit me in the face about that time as I had never grieved. I was working at a restaurant and uh, decided I needed to get away from my family, so I kind of ran away with permission. It was a friend of mine. and. We went down to his hometown in Mexico, which was actually also an artist community. And uh, I took painting down in Mexico and lived with the, well, I lived with him at first and was sleeping in the bed with a whole bunch of kids uh, because they didn't have any other room for me. And one day I was wandering around the town and and we heard music coming out of this little place, and uh, it wasn't uh, mariachi music, so that was interesting to us because that's all there was down there most of the time was mariachi music. And we went in, and we're sitting there watching this little acoustic performance, and, uh, and it was like a little an angel or something tapped me on the shoulder and said, why don't you ask the proprietor if she has a place where you can stay? So when it got done, I looked over at the lady that seemed to be the proprietor, and she looked like a really nice lady. And she was in her 40s, I was about 18. And I, I thought, well, I was shy at the time, and, but I went up to her and I said, do you think you have a, a, a room you could rent me? And she said, yeah, I have a nice apartment, and you could stay up there and, uh, you know, help me in the gallery and stuff. and." That'd be great. So I, I moved in there, and I, I know something was looking out for me because I stayed there and went to school, took painting and Spanish lessons, and had a great time down there, uh, living down there with this family. And uh, did run out of money, had to wait on a wire for a long time, and, and so I left. And uh, I didn't have a girlfriend here, but I wanted one. And when I came up here, back up here, and started working at the movie theater where I worked before I left, I found her. And her name was Jessica, and she was reading a book by Jose Luis Borges at the time called The Garden of Forking Paths, which, if you haven't read it, is about an infinite book within a short story, and um, about how all our choices in life that we make consciously or lived out in another in another multi facet of the multiverse that we live in is kind of the concept and and so that was fascinating to me that I ran into her at that time and um, we uh, we fell in love for real and, and but it was too early for us and Things went really well for the first year until she asked me to marry her. I hadn't resolved my parents' divorce and my dad's death, and I, I couldn't say yes, and I didn't want to say no. So we sweated it out for two years, and it, it didn't work out. So when, when I knew she was leaving me, I couldn't help but think about all the choices that I'd made up to that, my, that point in my life. And... Uh, and the book she was reading when I got back from Mexico and how important choices at these various points were and and how, well, I just, I hope that some of these other facets of the multiverse were being lived out, you know, and uh, because I really wanted to stay with her, but I had made poor choices. And so she left me and I wound up in Topeka because my mom didn't know what to do with me. And I wound up at Miniger. I, um, you know, I'm fine now. I, I, I've got myself together and um, I'm happy. I'm going to graduate college soon, knock on wood. And now I have another 
I have a wife and a stepdaughter, which just seems so meant to be at this point, that I don't really question all those choices anymore. I'm happy with the facet I'm in. And uh, who could figure that out anyway? You know, if there's anything I want to say to anyone watching that's thinking about life and choices and things like that, is yeah, it works out. No matter if you feel you've made poor choices or you're considering a choice, and it seems, you know, like, damned if you do and damned if you don't or you're giving something up to do that making a sacrifice it's okay it's gonna work out i i really want to say that